fellow students. All right, today what we're going to do is we're going to show you what happens first thing in the morning when a nuclear medicine technologist comes in and uh, has to check in a radioactive package. So over here we have a radioactive package. This is actually level one. Uh, number one here, it's a white one is what we refer to it as. And inside it we have some radioactive material. Before I open up that radioactive material, I have to get my GM meter here and I have to measure to see if there's any contaminable or I should say any type of radioactivity coming off the surface of that product. Uh, before I even do that though, I have to make sure that the dark counter is working. And there's a little hot source right there. And then the other thing is that we can also look at the, uh, the battery. We hit the battery and button and says battery okay. So we're good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna approach this object here and I'm gonna see if there's any radioactivity coming off it. And sure enough, there is. Let's find out exactly how much. I have to put to level one. This is surface reading. And we're somewhere in the neighborhood of, oh, and we're going down and up, probably about 0.5. So one, one times 0.5 means that that's how much radioactivity is coming off of that, this material inside the box. The second thing to do is to do three feet away and to measure again. And now there appears to be, well, very, very little but uh, I would probably have to say it's probably background. You know, occasional clicking is occasional clicking, which is just background radiation. The next thing I do before I can do anything else is I have to now wipe the package to make sure there's no removable radioactivity, put that in a tube, and I count this in what we refer to as a well counter. I'm not gonna operate that, but we count that. It needs, this may make no sense, it needs to be below 2200 disintegrations per minute. And as long as that's done, that's good. Once we have all that data, we come over here. This is a radioactive shipping and receiving report. Uh, we identify the radionuclide. We, we identify the amount of activity at surface and at, at three feet. Then we also calculate the amount of, white, uh, amount of removal contamination that came off of that. And in this scenario, it was 14.6 disintegrations per minute which is way below 2200. So we know there's really no removal contamination. Once you've done all that, you're now ready to turn around and actually open up the box and actually yank out your stuff and figure out what you got here. Oh, look what we have. We have a unit dose. Most pharmaceuticals come pre-unit uh, pre dose, meaning they can call up the pharmacy, we give the patient's name, we tell them what time we're gonna do the procedure, we tell them what the procedure is, they make the appropriate radio pharmaceutical from that. So now with this radio pharmaceutical, we come over here, and unfortunately there's no label on this, but there'd be a label on it with the patient's name, a little radioactive symbol that would look actually, it would look exactly like this over here, attached to the actual vial, okay? That's, that's what it actually would be on here. And that confirms what we think is supposed to be in here, uh, and uh, that it is what we ordered. We take the dose out, and uh, I could use tongs if I wanted to to uh, re to increase the distance and we're going to open this up and put this in here and as you can see we have radioactivity now that radioactivity should actually measure the actual dose that you're going to inject the patient within plus or minus 20 percent uh -huh. now ready okay now we pull this out and we pull out the syringe, and we can put it in here. This is a small L block, uh, which has, this is lead glass. This is lead, lead, so to speak. It protects us from the radiation, and it allows us to go in here and work with the radioactive isotope. Uh, what I need to do now is da -da -da -da, take a syringe shield and put that into the container, if I can get it in the right way. And I'll open up the screw a little bit here. All right, tighten down on the screw. And notice, notice also, there's, this is lead glass too. And that's a window here, because when you stick the patient in, the, in a vein, you wanna make sure that you pull, when you pull back, you actually see blood in the actual syringe. So now that I'm all set, I come over here and I talk to the patient. I confirm two methods of, hello, Mr. Jones, you don't look very well today. Matter of fact, you look pretty much dead. Poor guy, uh, he had a rough night. So, uh, 
Needless to say, confirm who he is, check his ID badge, and then I, I set up the uh, tourniquet and I wipe it down with alcohol and I inject the radioisotope into the patient. And thus ended your first lesson. So once you're done, you, oh, I know, this is kind of clever. You never supposed to re put a cap on uh, because it might be contaminated with uh, some kind of nasty bugs. So you have to develop a method in which to recap. It's the only thing that you recap. I think nurses will tell you never recap a needle. But in nuclear medicine, we do because there's radio, there can be radioactive blood on the end of it. It could spit along the floor uh, or it could drop wherever, and then all of a sudden you've got a radioactive contamination. So once this is done, we then come on over here and we open up our little lead trash bin, which has this right here, and we unscrew the syringe and we throw it away and you're done for the day. You close that up and there you go. Now, what you have to wait is once this thing fills up, you have to wait usually about 10 half-lives for the radioisotope before you can actually discard it in routine trash. Usually, uh, 10 half-lives will, will, will take care of it. More specifically, with technetium as an example, it has a six-hour half-life. So once you throw in the last dirty syringe and you seal it off, then usually 60 hours later you can discard it. Thank you for joining us today and uh, your analysis of nuclear medicine. I'm pleased to see any of you at any time uh, should you have any questions about our profession. Have a great day and glowingly yours, Marcus B. Newkirk.